afternoon, everybody, and welcome to a very important update on the COVID-19 situation. I'm Dr. Scott Berger from Dr. Luke on Call. Today, I'm going to discuss um, some very important things that are happening at the moment. And it seems like this wave is hitting us uh, definitely a little bit more now. Uh, the numbers are going up. Uh, people are seeing it. It's almost like we had a, a period where it feels like nothing was happening and now the numbers are really going up. So I'm going to take you through some web pages with, with very interesting statistics. We're going to start with the global situation, the numbers, what the issue is with lockdown, what the numbers are in South Africa and um, how the numbers are increasing at the moment. We can also um, look at the death rate and how has that changed over the world and what can we expect maybe in the, in, the, in the month or so to come and why it was so important to prepare correctly the previous month. And now everyone has maybe felt, yo, the lockdown has been bad. We want to go, you know, we want to carry on. We want to get the economy going. People are really struggling because they can't work. There's no income. People are hungry. Businesses are struggling. And I, I really understand that. But I think if we look at what's to come, then it's important that the healthcare facilities, healthcare workers, hospitals had enough time to prepare. And I can really assure you that there's been a lot that has happened in the hospitals over the last few weeks. Then I'm also going to look at the um, different clinical situations that we see with the disease now. Like we discussed before, there's blood clotting issues. It's not just a lung thing. And it's important to see that they are actually ventilating less patients and giving them high oxygen flow. And that's actually giving us good results. Also something that you can do to prepare for this as well. So stay right to the end because that's when I'm going to talk about what you can do at home. What to take, what you can get at your pharmacy to boost your levels so that your immune response are going to be good. Okay, let's start and have a look at the, the different websites. Firstly, Worldometer site. We all know the Worldometer site, most of us do. Currently we're standing at um, 4.7 million cases more or less, um, deaths 313,000. If we scroll down, we can see that America is still definitely the highest as far as case rates go. Um, we just go to yesterday, and you can see um, the daily deaths in America is still around 1,200. If we go all the way down to South Africa, um, the nice thing about this site, you can click on the country, and if you click on the country, you'll get more information. You can see we had 831 cases yesterday, which has definitely been our highest. And you know, the last time I did this recording, we you know we were down at like 20 or 30 or 50 cases. So if we go to South Africa in particular, um, you can see 14,355 cases, 261 deaths, and 6,478 recoveries, which is which is a good thing. The total cases. Um, when we did our lockdown, we were there, our first lockdown. That flattened the curve quite a bit. Um, and now, you know, we are going up. If you go look at the daily cases um, on this graph, that is before we had lockdown. We ended up at 243 cases. Then there was a dramatic reduction for about a month. If we look at the date there, the 27th of March and around about, you know, 19th, 20th of April. We had a month and a lot of preparation was done in this month. I know it's been difficult for people, but that was really important. And now we're seeing this big escalation that is happening uh, that can be expected to actually continue for a while before we start reaching the plateau. Um, same there with the active cases. Our total deaths are also increasing at the moment, um, as, you, as you can see there. And then deaths per day, um, unfortunate. Uh, that it's that there's any deaths but um, compared to the world standard this is still fairly low and we hope to really try and keep that there and that is why if the hospital and the healthcare situation collapses we cannot keep it at low death rates then people will literally die because they can't get oxygen at the door of the hospital so we need to try and keep that as low as possible um, this again South African numbers and um, the different provinces we all know that in the Western Cape, the numbers are, are a lot higher. There's also a lot more testing being done in the Western Cape. Um, the other provinces, Gauteng uh, being the second highest, and then the Eastern Cape. Um, active cases, as you can see there. Um, and we've done quite a number of tests, 439,559 tests. That's, that's quite a lot, but we still obviously need to do a whole lot more testing. 
Okay, now let's get to some interesting things. This is an interesting website that talks about um, the, the, the way lockdown was implemented across the world. And this animation shows really what happened from the 25th of January. Um, I can actually go back a little bit, 23rd of January. The, the darker it gets, the more countries you have locked down and more strict the measures are. So the purple one would be complete lockdown. So if we click on that, you can see it started in, off in China. Um, as the time went on, we got to February, um, mid-February. Then Italy come, came in as well. If you look at Europe, Russia, all over Europe, lockdown got very serious. This was mid-March, end of March going into April and you can see the complete doc lockdowns are the purple areas. You can see that that for instance in the Scandinavian countries, Sweden has had this tactic of uh, not locking down uh, but unfortunately Sweden has paid a, uh, a bit of a price there. They've had quite a, a high um, mortality rate. If we go to Sweden um, you can see South Africa's got a 4 in 1 million death rate. Sweden has had 29,000 cases. They've had, that's up to yesterday, they've had 3,674 deaths, which is a death per million of 364. So that's quite, that's quite a lot if you compare it to all these other countries. You know, look at those death rates, 17,4, 322, 2, So 364 deaths per 1 million is, is quite a high, high death rate. The next uh, page I wanted to share with you is coronavirus tracked um, as the epidemic peaked near you. Now, if we look at the stock figures published uh, by government each day, are difficult to compare across the countries because obviously all the countries are, have got different situations, but you can definitely see a very, very clear pattern in most countries. Right at the top, we've got the United States. Um, they've had very late lockdown situations and the countries that spiked very high and it was left to spike, keep on spiking, they had some very negative consequences. You know, you can see the United Kingdom. And remember, if you look at these, these are deaths per day, per day, remember? That's 2,000 deaths per day. And it, you, they started counting when you had three average deaths per day. So South Africa um, had a fairly flat curve you look at that a lot of countries that followed this line down the bottom had flat curves but that means that it's not going to be a 60-day cycle before you come down if you look at uh, China 90-day cycle that's where they were but they started off quite steep in the beginning so you can expect the countries with lower or flatter curves you can expect the countries with flatter curves to carry on a bit longer than 90 days. So we're looking more towards a four month cycle and not a two or three month cycle because of the, um, the curve. But that then gives you the opportunity to prepare your healthcare facilities so that they can deal with the numbers. So that you, when you walk into the ER unit and you struggle to breathe, they will have a bed for you and they will have oxygen for you. So that's, that's really important to, you know, to know. The next one I want to talk about is um, the latest figures um, as countries fight to contain the pandemic. This page will provide an up-to-date visual narrative of the spread of COVID-19. So please check um, back regularly. So you can have a look at this site um, and, and go to this page. This is very interesting if you look at the daily death rate across the world. In the week of 9 to 15th of March, the average deaths per day was 394. Then the numbers end up to be 4,645 at its peak. And you can see the areas that had the peak. This is uh, the USA, um, this is Europe, the rest of Europe with Spain, Italy, and UK in those blocks there, and then South America and Africa down the bottom pretty low contribution to the total numbers because we in the southern hemisphere these countries were all in their winter area winter time so they had much higher numbers one very very interesting um, slide if you look at this 
Death rates have climbed far above the historical averages in many countries that have faced COVID-19 outbreaks. So the shaded area indicates the total excess deaths during the outbreak of COVID-19. And they've only chosen a few countries to, um, you know, on this slide. And you'll see what happens. The UK, this is the number of deaths per week. Um, if you look at the UK, they really spiked up above that. Australia spiked up above that. Belgium, Denmark, France, Italy, Netherlands, Portugal, South Africa. Very interesting. What has the lockdown done? We have got a, a death rate that has actually dropped significantly. That's all cause death, you know. So that means violence, accidents, and our alcohol rated accident rate is one of the highest in the world. Um, to about, this is probably about 6,000. Ours have actually come down during uh, the lockdown time. And then same there with Spain, Sweden, Switzerland. So interesting that this um, European website, uh, British website, have included South Africa in the slide to show that we've got a, you know, a, a, a negative uh, death rate there. Next, uh, let's talk about um, the COVID-19 uh, mysteries a little bit. So initially, what did we think? Initially, we, we thought from China, a respiratory lung in, uh, infection, it affects only the lung cells. Then they realized, but um, this virus enters at the ACE2 receptor, as we've discussed before. And we started seeing some mysterious things. We started seeing blood clot issues. We started seeing stroke and digestive problems. We even started seeing um, little chillblains, you know, uh, sores and chillblains on the, on the toes and the feet and bruisings, almost like little bruisings. And they didn't know exactly what it was. Um, this has got a very interesting grammatical um, display of the human body. So you see that the patients get headaches, there's little blood clots that can form and even strokes in some patients that have got bad cardiac disease. Um, yes, we know about the coughing that's there and the shortness of breath, muscle aches and pains, um, intestinal area, some nausea and vomiting and diarrhea that can happen in, in some patients. Uh, the kidneys can struggle a bit with blood flow because we know that it affects the blood vessels and then in the um, smaller blood vessels, rashes and skin lesions um, can, can develop. This is another interesting article that uh, I found and it's researchers that are now giving some blood antibodies to patients that are really sick. So what happens is they take patients that have already had the disease, they take blood donation from them and they take the plasma of the blood and they extract the antibodies that's already against the virus. And in the USA, more than 7,200 people have received the so-called um, plasma, convalescent plasma. So that is a, a temporary immune response boost. So you're gonna get antibodies against the virus from someone else that might help to reduce your viral load. So in the very sick patients, they've used this and it's um, actually looked like it's, um, you know, it's worth uh, researching and developing. Pharmaceutical companies need to get involved uh, to get these immunoglobulins produced, uh, which is a very difficult and expensive process, but they are at work on this. Okay, then as I said, some prevention, some prophylaxis. So this Eastern Virginia Medical School uh, um, given us a, a prophylactic guideline it's quite interesting, I looked at that. Um, in the beginning of the disease, you know, when there's incubation and symptomatic stage starts, that's when you can do some prevention. When it gets to the second, third, and the fourth stages, it's a little bit difficult because those patients might need to go to hospital. So what prophylactic measures can you take at home? Firstly, you can get some vitamin C, 500 milligram twice a day. Remember, if you take a whole lot of vitamin C in one go, the body is not going to absorb it, you're going to excrete it. So you can split your dose and take it two or three times a day. Then we've spoken about quercetin before. Quercetin is a natural green plant extract. You can get that at your local pharmacy and you can take that twice a day as well. What the quercetin does, it is a zinc ionophore. So it opens the channels so that the zinc can go into the cells. And what does the zinc do? The zinc reduces the enzyme's ability in your cells to replicate the virus, to make more virus. And that is very relevant in the beginning of the disease. After the first 
um, five to seven days, it's not gonna have much of an um, you know, impact anymore. But it's important to realize that the zinc, vitamin C, and the quercetin is a good combination in the beginning. Then they talk about melatonin. We can just say sleep enough. Make sure you get seven to eight hours sleep. You can take melatonin as a supplement, but if you sleep enough, you're gonna have good melatonin levels generally. Vitamin D is also important, and, and they just get into the sun. So try and get out, try and get some sun exposure so that you um, have enough uh, vitamin D in the body. And then finally, um, the YouTube site, Dr. Luke on call. Um, please remember to subscribe. Uh, there's um, a whole lot of videos if you subscribe and you click on the notifications, you won't miss any videos. A whole lot of previous videos that was done. Amazing immune system is a, an important one that discusses how your body fights the infection. It's, um, I think, really important to look at. Also, um, the discussion with the pulmonologist, Dr. Fiona Kritzinger, was very valuable. Same with the discussion that I had with Dr. Ristron and with Dr. Inez Rousseau. They gave us some very good insights on the virus and of the progression of the disease. I plan to do a follow-up discussion with Dr. Kritzinger, and I really think that's going to be very insightful. If you have wondered why all these websites are without any ads, and there's no ads on the sides, even if you look back at the um, Worldometer site, there's nothing on the sides, that you normally would have all these ads on the sides, it's because I've discovered the Brave browser. The Brave browser is really amazing. It blocks all these ad um, advertisements. You don't get any of them, um, not on any other sites. You can see it's all clear on the sides. Um, I'll leave a link in the description if you want to download the Brave browser. It works exactly like your Chrome browser, also imports your own bookmarks. Uh, it's much safer, it's much faster, and they don't do tracking on your um, activities. Thank you for watching. I really think we must stay focused. We must support our healthcare workers and our environment. Remember to cover up your face, keep your social distancing. Remember to exercise, get out into the sun in the mornings if you can do that. Um, help where help is needed. We really need to pull together now when things are going to, need to get a little bit more difficult. Stay focused. I know it's been a long time. This is now the time that we have to stand together and we will overcome and we will beat this. Thank you for watching. Remember, because of a lack of knowledge, people perish. Stay home, stay healthy and stay safe.